Hello and welcome to So Farscape. A fun-filled Farscape fan cast by a fervent fan. And a frankly fascinated first-timer. I'm Kaki. I'm Kay. And, and this, this is the story of Farscape. Has been the, the story so of Farscape. Farscape. It's yes. the final, the finale, the finale. We're here, we're finally here. Oh, okay. Episode 502. <sighs> the Peacekeeper Wars Part 2? Or was it? did it actually have another name? No, it's just still Peacekeeper War or the Peacekeeper War or the Peacekeeper, Peacekeeper Wars. Wars uh, depending on which source you uh, you believe, either like the second half of the miniseries or season five, episode two or... The season episode three and four mixed together, jumbled mm-hmm. up. Uh, or season four, episodes 23 and 24, oh, according to... Wow. I think that's Brian Henson. He prefers to consider the miniseries the last four episodes of season four, although okay. technically, like, David Kemper disagrees because probably, like, the last minutes of bad timing for him count as the premiere for season five. Right, I would say that, yeah. I sort of feel like Abed from Community talking about Farscape to the, <laughs> to the dude who is obviously hitting on him. Ah, yes. Which would make sense, because what kind of wormhole would it be if you could only move from one place to another within the same galaxy on the same day? You know, speaking of wormholes, um, what do you say we use one to teleport this conversation someplace a little more private? That doesn't make any sense. When you watch it the second time, is better than the third season. And the fourth season, when you watch it the fifth time, okay, is equal to... Um, what's your name? Abed. Abed and Robert. Hey, Robert. Abed, would you like to have gay sex with me? No, thank you. Wow. Okay, so what is wrong with you that you can sit here this whole time and never pick up on the fact that a man is hitting on you? Oh, I actually did pick up on it after a while. You actually... And? I really, really like talking about Farscape. (laughs) Try an Abed in the morning. (laughs) Oh, I want to, let's just, I was going to say, let's just jump in, the, but that's not what we do, right? No. This is our last chance, Kay, this is our last episode, we have to do this right. That means that you have to help me to do it right, because okay. I'm the one who's most at risk of like, well, you know, you know what I'm like. I wouldn't say that, but all right. Okay, uh, so what do we normally do at this point? We either avoid talking about the episode, or we ask, Gun. or we look what the... Uh, what our listeners had to say. Synopses. Let's yes, go with the let's synopses do those. first. I'm sure we all, we've forgotten things. Like, I'm sure the format has also changed several times in what we do and how we do it. But yes, we have The Peacekeeper Wars Part 2. Yep. All right, here we go. Step right up, step right up. See the amazing wormhole weapon. Guaranteed to bring a peaceful end to all galactic conflicts. All you need to make it yours is say pretty please with a cherry on top. Thank you, Marky C. Wow. Oh, I've got one from Kelpie. The Eidolons really begin to open up to the crew. Crichton. <laughs> and Crichton does terrifying things with Scorpius' as cherry. Oh, well, he lost that a long time ago. <laughs> okay, one more. Oh, John can make a wormhole weapon. Oh, dear. So who's up for Babylon 5? It has to be cheerier than this. <laughs> okay. Thank you, the Derp Prime. <laughs> Thank you for that suggestion of perhaps a follow-up show that we can do. We oh. have, in fact, talked about like Babylon we have, 5. We have. Whether I would call that cheerier than this, I do not Ooh, know. There's a lot of dreariness in that as well. Thank you, the derp. Weapons make destruction, people make peace. Let's find a way for this war to cease. Too much fun, baby likes guns. Big fiery hole is becoming obese. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Rick from the Delta Quadrant. Kiora, once again. The Delta Odrant. <laughs> the d- <laughs> What is that in reference to? I don't know, nothing spectac- in particular. Okay. Although, uh, speaking of Babylon 5, there's like this uh, appropriate quote from, oh, uh, what's her name? Ivanka? No. Ivanova. Uh, Ivanova. Ivanova, that's the one, yes. Yeah, Susan like, Ivanova. Boom today? No boom today? Then boom tomorrow. Always boom tomorrow. <laughs> wow. Kind of the antithesis of this week's episode. Well, I mean, no, there was no boom today. Well, there was a lot of booming, actually. But yeah. Yes. Oh. And with the hope of no boom tomorrow. But I think that leads us into, now actually we get to talk about the episode. I'm going to push this button. All right, push it. So the heroes saved the day at the cost of Dargo's life, but they named the baby Dargo. So what what was your favorite bit? She gives you the willies. (laughs) Was that not it? We're making this a really short episode. (laughs) Is that not how we do things? Well, I've got a few, like, lined up. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, let's do this. Let's grab these jeeps because it is gorgeous. Now, it was interesting watching this with your boyfriend once again, who has not been around for uh, a quite great a while. Number episode. No, it was kind of been missing out. So, yes, he was like partial to seeing the last ever episode of Farscape without actually having seen part one. Considering his track record of the episodes that he's seen, I think he started with like Crackers Don't Matter. 
Oh, I can't remember. Honestly, can't remember which ones he's seen. So I, this is pretty. I, th- on I know par. he's seen Look of the Princess Part Two, uh, but, but not, not part one, one or three. three. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, we, it was just showing the first few seconds of previously on, and he goes, hey, who is that? No, that's Chiana. What's yeah. her eyes? What's with her eyes? Well, oh, I'm surprised that he noticed that, you know. That- honey, wait until you see Sokozu. <laughs> yeah. Who are these? They're Scarens. What are Scarens? Yeah. Oh, no, that, he knows no. what Scarens are. I he saw so. them in uh, Look at the Princess. Oh, yes, of course. That's where they would have been. Yeah. Oh, he's well prepared. So, let's see. What have we got? Uh, yeah, there's a quick montage of uh, what happened in uh, part one. you got to be kidding me. They're entombing us. Salik! This is very original! We start in media res. Like, it was a good cliffhanger where uh, oh, yes. our heroes they're, they're, were all they're trapped. Oh, yes, they're in the steam room. The car are about to invade the room where Anakin and... Oh, <laughs> sorry, uh, where Obi-Wan and uh, Qui-Gon Jinn are being held in, because they're trying to break through the... Uh, oh, wait, wrong movie again. I appreciate you, Kay. <laughs> I mean, the solution's very similar, except instead of a li- lightsaber, we have Sokozu's concentrated firepower. Who, like, yeah, she can set things on fire. Have we seen her do that before? Like the little fire thing, the whole fire thing? We are... Genetically engineered to kill Scarens by emitting an intense radiation. Well, she did the her sort of heat trick. Yeah. Do you remember? She did that with her hands to melt some controls, and oh, then she yeah. blasted heat to kill yes. Scarens. And apparently she can direct it. Yes, but apparently also the entire explosion of the rest of the flammable gas in the room. Yeah. I mean, it's nice that you can direct your heat blast, but that doesn't mean that, like, the gas which is filling the room, which is now going to explode, is also going to be directed. But, you know... I, I think it very clearly does. I can direct it. Well, obviously... I, I think we've just seen. No, she yes, did say very that much she so. can direct so it. It blows the door out, kills a few of the chariots who are standing in front of the door, and the Emperor is awoken to... Whoa. What was that explosion? Internal, level 21! Insurgency teams to containment quarters. All teams, now! Why is there an explosion on my ship? And then shortly after, he is alerted to why are there explosions outside my ship as well. Those are not internal. All systems offline. Because uh, so I, I kind of missed that part because, like, a uh, uh, late, little bit later on, I was thinking, like, why didn't they do the three shots disable thing? But they don't really pay an awful lot of attention to that. Look at the Jeep. That's exactly what the Luxon Penetrator does. Like, as soon as the explosion oh, yeah, goes off uh, internally. Yeah, oh, yeah, you're right. You're totally right. Yeah, it, it's so anticlimactic almost because, yes, it literally only takes three shots. Why three? You usually slay me with just one. I must have been writing something down that I missed that because it's like I can clearly see it in the Jeeps, but it's uh... handy, those Jeeps, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah, so the Luxon Penetrator, as the yes, ship is called. Yes, I heard called. that. Yeah. Yeah, it looks so cool. It decloaks or unshrouds or whatever the terminology is and pops three poles into the uh, Scarron. Oh, what was it called again? Decimator? Yes. And that's enough to disable the ship. So now the uh, the Luxon commandos can uh, can board, board the, the ship. ship and try to help us help the prisoners escape. Which is, honestly, I, I really love this sequence. I think it's so, so cool. Yes, um, it's the first of many, many fighting scenes in this episode. They are spectacular. Oh, yes. You're on board with these fight scenes I, I'm being... saying that they're spectacular. I'm not saying that they might they could have done with fewer of them, but... Well, at least it's not as bad as, like, The Room and it's, <laughs> and it's five love scenes, all with the same terrible soul music. But, oh. So their focus is on getting a very ill Rigel Yes. Uh, out of that gas. He's not which doing, is... he's got pre eclampsia or something, and uh, he's not doing very well. Aaron says, Stop, stop, stop. Weapons. We all need weapons. Yeah. Very wise. There's an opportunity for armaments. There's not going to be a lot of opportunities. I, I, I love these charred guns. They're amazing. They're yeah, so right. Cool. They're, they're, yeah, fantastic. They're sort of three petals. Pronged, yes. Uh, Absolutely gorgeous. Stark is still not much help. He's still traumatized from being forced yes, to, to take uh, over the, uh, the powers of the. Uh, McCall is not, not, not the Eidolon, but the precursor to the Eidolons. No, that is the, the, the Eidolons. It's just the, yeah, the oh. ancestral Eidolons. Right, the, yes. The, the, okay, the I, thought, I thought you had a different name, but fair enough. There's a, ooh, there's a bit of a problem. They yes. uh, they can't quite meet up the way that they uh, they wanted to. Stop acting like a bunch of swimmers and look down! Hey, the cavalry's here! There is, however, a quick baby transfer. Yes. Which we don't get to see, thankfully, any of the details from of. This part attaches to Rigel, the other part to you. Before you know it, the baby's transferred, so elegantly designed, anyone can use it. Good luck. But at the same time, it's also not, like, completely... It looks like this weird, like... Hand wave. It looks like this weird tool that would I would consider, like, maybe used for bleeding brakes or something, you know? That's... <laughs> yeah, it does look weirdly sort of siphony-y. Yes. Um, Syringy, siphony-y. 
which uh, uh, Aaron does not pause from firing. No. I'm really sorry about this, baby. It's all right, just get it right the first time. Nobody gets it right the first time. While they're, uh, uh, no, they're trying I to mean, keep the Peace Carrot Keepers, forces you know, at they're, bay. They're very good with this sort of thing. Yes, they meet the troops, but they're on the different deck. They try to shoot through the grating. doesn't work until uh, Scorpius decides to throw one of his glow sticks on it, which yes. melts through it instantly. They're able to jump through. Quite a significant jump that a uh, happily newly pregnant Aaron makes without, uh, without yes. effort. I'm pregnant. Well done. Thank you. And Dargo immediately goes like, oh, you look good. And it's like, oh, she's already got that pregnant glow to herself, <laughs> I guess, like from back being pregnant again for 20 seconds. You look great. I'm pregnant again. Congratulations. congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, I love the Darko and Aaron moments throughout this. Like, yeah. They're just such bros together. Oh, things are not looking too great in the uh, in the command center. We get lots of really funky camera work around the Scarron command where they're mm-hmm. now unable to move. I think, oh, these sets are so gorgeous. Everybody makes it back into the Luxon Penetrator, and away we fly. Yes, they manage to... Uh, actually, also, everybody is still surprised that Dargo and Gian are still alive because they thought they were on board the transport pod, which got destroyed by the... Oh, yeah, Scarans. there's not much time to sort of reflect on no. how, uh, how lucky we all are there. And away we fly. Everybody hang the frill on! War Minister Akna is called to task by Again. the uh, by the Emperor. I didn't even remark on her hat has had an upgrade oh. last time. Oh, she's, she's got a little bit more Queen Amidala, I guess. It's the hat. Yeah, she's got uh, sort of metal plating on it. It's so dope. And Maybe now, this is like uh, how they show rank, that you get more and more additions to your hat. And uh, she's gone from a one-star general to a two-star. Well, she's a minister, so maybe she's going to... Well, we do learn that the Emperor plans to vacate his seat in order to focus more on galactic... Right. that's much later, though. He, f- he figures that he's already won and that he's going to be, like, Galactic Emperor or so, rather than just Scarron Emperor. You understand I know nothing about Scarron politics. So apparently in the Scarron hierarchy, there's a position above Emperor, Emperor. so they must yeah. just have loads and loads of titles and positions, so... Yeah, I guess. So, I mean, lots of different hats sounds, like, appropriate for that kind of thing. Yay! <laughs> Everybody's back on board Moya. Yep. Who wants to be on Moya? Scorpio gets a new uh, cooling pack install from Skikozu. Look at his O face. Yeah. Is it, ooh. <laughs> he is, I think we remarked on that last week, like a dog getting the good scratch. <laughs> Just blissing uh, out. A little bit gormless look. So the plan is what exactly? Where is the. First of all, they realize that there is no solution. We are. Uh, everybody's foobard, frailed beyond belief. And John decides to jump into the module after he sees Aaron lying around moaning a little bit in discomfort, having, I think, bad dreams or anything or something like that. Yeah. We don't get to to see what's in Crichton's head yeah. at this point. So he just pops into the wormhole and goes to see Einstein. It's time! Indeed. And asks him to unlock the wormhole knowledge. Yes, even though in the previous episode, Einstein said no one should have that power. And Einstein grants that. Um, as, as apparently so, yes. There's an interesting parallel here that when John returns, he's got this bleeding cut on the yeah. side of his head. Talon John had that too after ah. the, the ancient Jack unlocked mm. his knowledge. Oh, nice little touch there. Almost like... You know, an actual sort of baffle had to be surgically removed from his brain in order to oh, let information yes, go through. Yes, I was wondering what that would, would have been the cause of that. Because maybe he got right? like, banged about in the wormhole a little bit. Uh, but like the uh, the penetrator is off, and Moya, I think, is also off. In the, I think they're going in the same direction. They're both going to Kajaga. Yeah. But to Dargo's great surprise, Jothi has stayed behind. Yes. He's like, oh, they have a little bit of... They, they seem to be getting along better than they used to. Well, I'm glad you and Chiana are back together. Day by day. Trust takes time. Yes, it does. After Dot Jothy notices that, oh, you seem to be on good terms again. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's happy to see that. Yeah. Now, something that doesn't take time is a transfer of power when it comes to the peacekeepers, because when Commandant Grazer is informed that, oh, you, the, the Grand Chancellor Merrick has been found dead, oh... A great tragedy for our people. Well... Arrange a ship-wide memorial service. Let's observe a moment of silence. 
that's that, and move the entire battle group oh, round. Whoa. But C High Command is sending a new uh, Vice Chancellor. Then send apologies to the Vice Chancellor for the extra distance he will have to travel. Yes, well, he'll just have to catch up, won't he? Yes, good luck. And meanwhile, I happen to be the highest person in this in the sector. So, I'm going to do what I want. Yay! Unlimited power, unchecked power, that's what everyone needs. Which is a real theme of this episode, right? Yes. Just everyone... Actually, literally everyone is, is completely obsessed with power, except for the Moyans. Like, even John, in his way, uh, uh, he wants to be free of it, but still, that's a form of obsession. Like, Scorpius can almost smell. Scorpius is having a little happy moment in his pants when he comes across John. <laughs> yeah. You possess it, don't you? Don't touch me! The secret to victory. The violent path to peace. There's his old face again. Harvey tries to get in on the action in a very weird yes. sort of... It's shot like video. Damn, it's big. It's bigger than big. Who's the woman who's standing next to Harvey? It's just like random... Yeah, I think they're, you know, random good-looking women that are brought to right, some, some kind of construction business meant to business look like deal. a realtor or something uh, who uh, probably in, uh, played a few Australian... Uh, Soap operas, like, I think that's pretty much a requirement to be on the uh, Farscape uh, cast as an extra. You know? Yeah. you. <laughs> Although I might be uh, confusing cause and effect here. <laughs> <laughs> because he's promoting Harvey and John's construction and engineering. Coming this year, wormhole weapons to the stars. Yes, it should be John and Harvey. Well, we can get a new sign made. It's a gigantic sign with these big barrels, gun barrels. It's sort of... Yes. A lot of Kubrick imagery here as well. That, that comes back later as well, yes. Harvey is very enthusiastic about his uh, mission culminating and John, John making some like wormhole you. weapons. Yep. We're on my timetable. You're fired. John! There is a very, very strong conversation between John and, uh, and Aaron. Uh-huh. Because John, this is a very typically masculine role, says, I don't have a choice. I have to exercise this power. I have to do this thing. And Aaron very correctly points out, no, this is what you want. This is what you want. This is what you want. No, Aaron, it is not. You don't get to just say that you're, that you're powerless. You actually also want this. And it's true. Anybody who says, I have no choice, is doing exactly what they want. Yeah. There's always a choice. It just might not be a pleasant choice. No. But once you, you say, I have no choice, then yes, you're doing what you want, because you've decided that this is what I have to do, and I have no choice, I can only do this. Yep. And deciding that other people can't possibly understand, which in the case mm. of, like, John and Aaron, is not true. Of yeah. course she can understand. Not completely. Everybody has their own journey. But she won't let him consider right. himself a martyr, essentially. Right, yes. This war... <clears throat> is not your responsibility. You and the baby are my responsibility. And how am I supposed to protect you from the peacekeepers and the scarens and the Tragans and the lions and tigers and bears with this? Winona? This gun? No. Gun is big enough. It's not enough. This, this is enough. Wormholes. What's inside my hand? This is ugly and it is malignant. But it will protect you ah, and the baby. You see, you don't just protect me. We protect each other. Uh, I thought this was really good. And he tries to explain it to her. He tries to explain it to her. Hold up, holds up a gun. Like, there's no yeah. gun big enough to keep us safe. Holds up his book, his, his, his scribbled parchments. Which has the, uh, the apparently the solution to the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Rigel is having postpartum depression. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's just—he's like a hormon hes a hormonal mess, as uh, uh, we are as informed. By Stark, once he comes out of his own stupor, catatonic uh, nurse, yes, trying to be fed by uh, Chana, who just kind of end up smearing this paste around his mouth, which is then gone in the next set. I really appreciate her at least trying to take yeah. care of Stark and feeding it because it's, it's a thankless job, but she's. Like, she's, she's doing all these things to help people around her, things that wouldn't have occurred to her mm. when she first arrived on Moya. I think this episode, it's just occurring to me now, it's really, really exhibiting behavior that is utterly antithetical to how these people arrived on the ship, showing how much their lives on Moya have changed them. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense in a show where there is a progress of the story and there's no big reset button and everybody more or less stays the same as yeah. uh, time goes on. We don't learn anything, we don't, ex- well, we experience things, but they don't certainly don't leave a mark. Crichton tries to explain to Pilot what he uh, what he needs, and, and Pilot rejects him. Pilot understands it, and he goes like, we'll have none of that, sir. Yeah, and if you think that this is a good idea... Then I don't know you as I thought. I yeah. Thought I did. Whoa! Like, will you actually use this? Like, yes, I will. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Surprise there. Yes, Pilot. We don't see enough of Pilot in this episode. He's got a few scenes, but I, especially towards the end, I kind of missed him there. Me too. Yeah. Naranti as well. I don't think she has any speaking line. Oh, she does have a speaking line in this movie. Yes. Yeah, it's like, I'm, oh, I'm miraculously still alive. No, no, no. It's about like, oh, I'm in command now. It's like, oh, did they give you a gun? Yes, but it's not loaded because <laughs> ammo's in short supply right <laughs> <Yeah>. now. <laughs> Listen, Grandma, call us when Jathy gets back. There's a lot happening. I'll try and remember. I have to go now. But this scene is fantastic for for Pilot, because very dramatically John draws his weapon and and Pilot again he draws a gun and points it as one of his friends, yep. which is like twice in five minutes now. And Pilot goes, "So you'll be starting with me?" Yeah, like oh we're going. Whoa! Oh, you're, you're preparing to commit genocide, and oh I'm the first one. Okay, that's that's how it's going to go. <laughs> Whoa! This is amazing. Yeah, Pilot is like he's none of the timid Pilot that we knew in the beginning. I mean, I guess he too has made his journey, and he's a lot more like yeah. Oh. Someone puts a gun at your head, Pilot. What do you do? What do you do? You defend yourself, and that. It's why we have to build this. No one has a weapon pointed to your head. Oh, God, pilot, everybody's got a weapon pointed at my head. There are other options. Well, why don't you explain that to the tens of millions of people who will die in the meantime? Is that truly your concern? Or is it Aaron and your unbirthed offspring you wish to protect? But it was part of an argument that that Crichton was making that that ends with him climbing over the console mm. and, like, oh, hugging Yeah, that's a, hugging lovely, pilot. that's a lovely little moment there. Because it's about family. Yeah. Like, and that's something that that pilot has come to understand. But they are soon interrupted because as soon as they come out of starburst, they start getting shot at because yes. the Scarans are waiting for them at the, on the water planet, whatever the name of that was again. Kajaga, Kajaga, or as I think one of the Luxons calls it, Kajargur. <laughs> See you back at Kajargan. I guess you had trouble pleaking with all the later <laughs> 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 because there's a battle. What the hell is happening? We're in a crossfire. The Scarron and Peacekeeper fleets have massed in orbit and are duking it out with one another. Yes, and trying to, like, eliminate all the uh, Kajarans as well. Sorry, not the Kajarans, the... The, the Kajagan Eidolons. Kajagan Eidol- yes. Right. I guess that's where my uh, discrepancy came from, because I think they were called the Kajagans, and then now they realize that they were descendants from the Eidolons. It's like they're that's now, what now they're retroactively called now. being called Eidolons instead yep. of Kajagans. Right. That makes sense. Mystery solved. Show over. No, wait. We're still right in the middle of it. We're actually a quarter of the way in, I suppose, at this point. Yes, but at this point, like, the action picks up to the point. I'm really curious to see how long this episode is going to be, because we tend, like, it doesn't take us long to talk about action sequences, no no matter how great they are. No, absolutely not. But we get one of my favorite moments of peril and set design. What are you doing? Not me! It's Moya! Because Moya nopes out of this battle. Yep, and she dives straight down into the water. I like I actually got have that written down. Moya's getting a bit of a taste for water here. She's like, yeah. I guess she enjoyed it. I mean, I, I did call it the spa planet the first time they arrived here. <laughs> yes, like, you did. Because she was cause kind of like chilling in the shallows, and now she's going for a little bit of a deeper dive. Yeah. Uh, and yes, we learned that spaceships are meant to keep air in, not water out. Yes, like... I, I kind of loved, I don't know who it was who who said, well, she's airtight in space, she must be airtight underwater. And Sikosu points out, no, no. That is totally not how it works. I think it was Chana, but... Uh... Can Moya do this? She's done it. She should be watertight. Should be. Harpoon hulls notwithstanding. Don't fool yourselves. The pressure differential down here compared to the vacuum of space is huge. We will flood. Pilot, where is Moya intending to go exactly? There's a difference between plus one atmosphere, you know, uh, um, uh, yeah. one atmosphere over pressure, and like minus a hundred from the outside, which your seals are not designed for. Nope. Seals tend to work one way. Yeah, they're intended to work against expansive pressure, not against compressive pressure. That's and so there's there's water, water everywhere. Uh, yeah, probably had a little fun with that. Like, uh, little that is not riff- an easy thing to oh, no. rig your sets to be able to handle water. If this, I guess volume. they weren't too worried about damaging them permanently anymore at this point 
Yeah, oh, good point. It's, it's like, like trash the dress after a wedding. Yeah, we can't really, uh, we, we don't care anymore. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this, this is it. On with the show, this is it! Pilot is dealing with it. Yeah, you talk for a bit. My um, okay. my gifs have self-destructed. Oh well, I'm just like going through the gifs. There's some Dargo and Chana. Your more, device is a lot more stable than mine. More blah, blah. There's a little bit of uh, walking through the corridors. Back to the command, where a still very pregnant uh, Grazer is like slinging orders around. Boss. Don't let the belly fool you, Lieutenant. You were aware of my status? Commandant, ma'am. And within this battle group, who outranks me? No one. Because we're really being sort of informed just how intractable these enemies are. They've, everyone there now believes that war is the only way forward. Right. And so that's what they're doing. Well, the Emperor is still pissed off royally that he was mind frailed by the uh, uh, Edelon. Oh, yes. And that's why his orders are destroy, kill every last one of them. Ooh, the Scarran term is nullify. Yeah. Per the Eidolons. The Scarran term is nullify. So, like, wipe the species out. Genocide. Which is why our heroes want to go and save them. Yes, because they still want to do the whole mind frail thing to broker peace. So, Sikozu and I think Rigel have gone off to do some work on one of the transport pods to make it waterproof. Uh-huh. So that they can get up to the surface to the uh, devastated city of the Eidolons under their former stealth shroud. Mm -hmm. And so they're able to make landfall. They've got a little bit of a plan, just a little inch of plan. Yes, for the idea is to find as many of the surviving Eidolons and get Stark to transfer the ability of the other Eidolon elder into someone else so that they can then pursue the peace process. Yep. For which they need to escape. Oh, their arrival on this city, by the way. It, it looks absolutely gorgeous. And then uh, Jothi calls for his troops. Are you nearby? And they say, yep. How far away are you? A lot closer than you think. As they come wall running down the, uh, down the battlements. Oh, yes, that's fantastic. Amazing. They split up to find various groups of, of Eidolons while keeping um, the Scarron forces at bay. And it just looks Amazing. Yes, there's a lot of uh, shooting, fighting. We see guys with various kind of quarter blades shooting around. Oh, yeah. Some of those quarter blades have like scopes on them. Yeah. Or that's uh, going to be really useful after you whack someone with a sword part. I know. It's like, yeah. Oh well, whatever. Oh, side plot, side plot. There's a spy. I am not a spy. Do you remember that there was a spy? Yes. Ooh, and we were wondering who the spy was, and I completely forgot to ask you to place bets. Ah, yes. Which I should have done. Hey, if I'd thought of it, who would you have guessed was the spy? Oh, oh, I... Because I... here we're, it's, we're led to believe that it's Grunschlick. He's a spy. Which makes a lot of sense, because he's... Oh, uh... I didn't get that feeling, cause especially because there are several things happen where Grunschlick is not around, mm. and he couldn't know. Because, yes, Grunschlick comes back like a bad penny. I thought you were dead. Me? Hardly at all. Ha! I don't well, you know. think I, he may be Scorpius? I probably would have bet Scorpius. Because, like, <laughs> he was, like, you know, established as being a, uh, at least a double agent and maybe even a triple agent. But so, it's so weird. Like, he was a secret spy. He claimed to be a secret spy for the Emperor, which Akna didn't know about. Yeah. And then you think he was also a secret spy for Akna, which the Emperor doesn't know about, because <laughs> Akna doesn't... What yeah. benefit would that have? Well, playing people off against each other. Yeah, that sure is fun. Yeah. While this is going on on the planets where we have the scene where uh, the Emperor goes like to Akna, I was like, oh, why don't you like try this throne out for a little bit? It's You might like it. And the seat suits where, you. Where he uh, says that, like, yeah, once he gets the wormhole weapon and they can uh, basically assume control over space, he's going to busy himself with bigger things than just the day-to-day -day management of the Scarron Empire, so she can be yeah. emperor and I'm going to be uber emperor. What's beyond emperor? Just tell us. I'm ah, so yes. curious about the terminology. Well, they're not called the Scarron hierarchy for nothing. But it turns out to be Sikozu. Yes, Sikozu. I was like, oh, why? Yeah. I mean, she worked for the Scarrons and then, like, against the Scarrons and then... Uh, yeah. Well, as she says, the Scarrons promise to free my people from their servitude. Oh, be freed yeah. And that's, Scorpius. I was like, they're not going to do that. Yeah, yeah. obviously like, no, not. That's no. not their style at all. They will not. And you have ruined something unique. And unique is always valuable. 
but that doesn't. We don't find that out until later. We also then, don't find out what happens to uh, to Sokozu. We see uh, Scorpius walking away, saying to Braca, "Oh, she's on her last mission for the Scarans." Yeah, and I, mean, I think we see Grunchlik and a twitching, unconscious Sokozu. Yes, and that's I mean it. This, this happened much later when. Uh, Scorpius yeah, I'm sort of following the spy. thread right, yeah. rather than doing blow by blow. Because that's the spy side plot. The other side plots that we have are yeah, the transfer of knowledge from Yondalau, who died in transit or who uh, uh, yeah. tried to influence the emperor and was killed for his troubles, whose skills were absorbed by Stark, who can now pass them on to, I think her name is Muoma. Yes. Is Muoma here? Yes, it's around the corner. Who has been meditating with the other Eidolons in order to receive this knowledge, which just blasts into her head. Yeah, now, she I'm... opens up to it. <laughs> which your boyfriend was not prepared for <laughs> at guess, all. I guess because he, he hadn't seen the end of episode uh, <laughs> no. 2422. So it's just saw him over there going, what the frell is this show? Okay, for, but to his credit, he didn't stop us. He just no. sort of accepted it. He knows enough about, about Farscape to know that you just shut up and get on with things. As you we open our faces to the universe, absorbing the joy and anguish all creatures feel. Then, upon maturation, we step to the altar to receive horror d'Arle. The ability to encourage rationality and tranquility in others. It's weird. It's this blue glow amid the normal orange glow of Stark's energies. Right. But the blue glow is, I guess, from the Eidolons, because we saw that same bluish-purple glow around the head of uh, Wasface when he was, like, mantrelling the Emperor. The Ondelau, yeah. Yes. The Diagnosen is, meanwhile, tending to Aaron. Oh, yes, who's the- unhappy with his ministrations. Yes. Don't touch me. Like, And if this had been a sebation pregnancy, it would have been, like, over already. <laughs> yes, he says that to John when he says, like, is there anything I can do? Oh, I think you've done enough already. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's apparently a very <laughs> classic thing that w- women giving birth accuse their husbands of, like, you did this. <laughs> yeah, and understandably so. <laughs> it takes two to tango, you know, but... <laughs> yes, but only one of them has to experience... True, but the... You know, <laughs> A significant sort of bodily uh, miracle of life. Let's yes. uh, let's stick with that. Gosh, isn't it lucky that we can't really remember pain very uh, well? Because yeah. otherwise, there would be no human word for sibling. <laughs> yes. Thank you to all womb havers for <laughs> propagating our species, yes. or it, for those of you who have chosen to. Like that's really well done. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> anyway, so yes, water breaks, uh, blah, blah, blah. That actually goes wrong, because uh, apparently the baby is in a breech lie. Yeah, uh, which at first the Diagnosen is uh, is meant to fix, but he gets shot in the head. Uh, yes, I mean, the Diagnosen seems to be a really dangerous profession. It's like, you get, like, killed all the time. You do when you're around the Moyans. True. Must excrete. Uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people do, especially if you don't have fun dialogue. Oh, yes. People with fun dialogue tend to come back from the dead. Right, if you're not, then... Like, and go like... like yeah, like and... A bit like Beaker from uh, The Muppets. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I think that's the voice of Fiona Gentle. Oh. Oh, wait. So Fiona Gentle is, like, now the lead puppeteer for Rigel, I think. No. Uh, it was uh, Johnny Eccleston earlier on. I'm just thinking, I saw in the credits... Uh, that there were three babies who played uh, the baby that uh, John and Aaron are uh, baby Dargo, as yeah. we know, little D. And one of them had the surname Gentle. So maybe that's Fiona Gentle's baby. I mean, it's not unusual for production crews in which you need a baby to just like go, okay, which one? Does anybody actually have a baby right now? <laughs> and just and imagine the- Brian Henson sort of turning around with his megaphone. Hey, babies, anyone? Who's got a baby? Roughly this size. <laughs> Go get it. I mean, the same is like in uh, in Labyrinth. Toby was also played by a kid of one of the staff, right. one, of the, one of the production crew. Oh, uh, it was just uh, well. Okay, yeah. that's great because then you have a parent on set, right? It's, it's, it's actually takes, great. It takes a lot of problems out of the way. Yeah, and it falls to Chiana, who protests a bit, like. I, I don't know about I don't them. do babies. That's Gnarls, like, as yeah. she calls them. I'm still know. a gnarl myself. Right, yes. <laughs> Can't birth a gnarl. I don't want a gnarl. I hate gnarls. I'm still a gnarl myself. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I don't do this sort of thing. But she does it. 
which is which is really remarkable. Yeah. Or at she least actually she manages to, to to turn the kid around by massaging Aaron's stomach. I think so at one point she's acting like a. Uh, Enterprise crew member who is just standing in the background, <laughs> twisting their arms around, which she's kind of doing to uh, Aaron's stomach here, trying to like get this breached baby to turn around. Oh God, would you know how to do it? Um, I mean, no, not a focus. I mean, with cow- with cows and horses, they just kind of reach in and like flip it over like that. But not an option with uh, not with really no. and narrow pelvises. I but... think they just t- tend to just like pull them out legs first. Well, there was a there was a risk of being of entanglement with the uh, the placenta umbilical as well cord, was yes. uh, was mentioned, yes. which uh, umbilical cord, correct? Yeah, which would make pulling out risky. Yeah, I mean, yes, that's always like a problem. I mean, the it can become a biggest problem. problem that Shiana faces is that Aaron won't stop fighting yes, this whole she's time. She's just sitting there like <laughs> she keeps firing that past my head. I quit. Fine. Listen, if she doesn't stay still, I can't do this. If I don't fire, we're dead, sweetheart. For once, let me cover you. Pip, can you do this? Yes, maybe if she stays still. Shooting makes me feel better. Honey. Fair enough. Like, you know, you've got to do something. Like, if you, otherwise you can only concentrate on what's going on. And, like, working off a bit of aggression seems like a good idea. It's like, oh, yeah. I'm fairly sure that most maternity towards don't allow big guns, but... <laughs> For this exact reason. Yeah. Aaron says, like, of you know, if I don't keep shooting, this baby doesn't get born at all. We'll all die. Which is a good point. Yeah. It's a very good point. And then ultimately it comes down to, yeah, well, shooting makes me feel better. Bustin' makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> and John does for her what she did for him earlier, which is like, hey, why don't you let me cover you for a change? Yeah. Right? You do this. I'll do that. And to uh, to Aaron's credit, she trusts him amid these ruins. There's this fantastic shot of Bracca, who looks a little bit bewildered as he stands there with first one gun, then two guns, then a third gun, because he's been sent to collect all the available oh, firearms. Yeah. Yeah. And it, look, it looks absolutely hilarious. It's... Uh... Hey, doesn't Bracca look fucking great? Like he this? does, but that, especially in that Jacket shot, he's open. got this kind of bewildered look while they're talking while Aaron is in uh, labor and uh, in the middle of all his entire firefights. And it's just... He's a little bit bruised. He's got a, a little bit of blood running down his face. He's got his jacket open. You can see his dog tags. Yeah. A really, really hot look. So the tactical assessment is that we probably can't survive another... We can't defend against another assault. Right. And Jothi is unable to bring his troops in close enough either. They are stuck on the other side. They can't, like, come to the rescue. They're working on it, but, the yeah, there's too many Scarons and Charids in between them to solve this. Yep. And Moya is still repairing herself. Although there uh, is a plan, we learn, because yes. both, cause John asked, like, how long is it going to take you out, Lisa and Arn? Which is apparently useful because it's also about an iron until sunrise. Yeah, well, we... you've got to have the glory shot. Oh, yes. Because um, the plan is for everyone to make it to the cliff and jump into the docking web, which is now... Physical, yes. I was yeah. just like, okay, wait, this used to be like the... Uh, how did you call it again? The, the docking dildo. The docking dildo, it Just yes. had a sort of force field. And now it kind of looks like a, like a parachute or a... Uh, yeah, it, look, it looks a bit like a drogue shoot. I mean, it's, 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 A what? A drogue shoot. I have no idea what that is. It's a, like, like it's a I asked because I don't know what it is. Not because I couldn't okay. hear what you <laughs> right, said. Sorry. Uh, it's uh, used for uh, uh, slowing down uh, planes or spacecraft when they're landing. Well, or it's called it, Trogue. Ooh, because it drags behind you. I don't know. Or it's used by skydivers, especially tandem jumpers. It creates a bit of extra drag. Oh, okay. Uh, so it, it might be drag shoot, like from a uh, drogue. Oh, like so. A, yeah. So Maybe it's a person's name. Otherwise, they fall too fast. So tandem jumpers uh, try to tend to have a drogue shoot behind them as well to help right. them slow down a little bit. Hmm. Uh, and like I said, it looks a bit like a sea anchor, which is kind of like the same thing. It's, yeah. Uh, you throw it out there and then uh, it kind of anchors It's a big you. old net. Right, yes. It's a scoop. It's a, it stops you. I mean, you're still moving with the current, but at least you're not being blown away by the wind as much. Too much fun. Can we go now? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time to push. I can't. You can. You can. Push. Here. Help us. We are smelling. Help You're not helpless. I'm here. Come on, push. All right. So the baby is in place. Erin has agreed to commit herself to this process of birthing because this is also like a subplot that we don't really, right. that you could miss. She isn't fully convinced about 
like motherhood being for her. Right, yes. Right, she had that conversation with Dargo that it was something that, that Crichton really wanted, and so she wanted as well. But like intrinsically, she's still struggling with the reality now that it's getting closer and closer. Mm. But one thing she knows very, very certainly, once she's in the font, she yells for Stark to marry them. Oh, yes. Oh, wait, here, here, I, I just came across the shot of Bracca with the gun standing there oh, looking okay. a bit apprehensive. And it's like, <laughs> Very he's, kind good. Of, he's kind of just like collecting all these guns. Yes, just as the birth is about to happen, they're in the uh, baptismal fountain of the... Uh, kind of is that, isn't it? Uh, of the, what, what you call them again? Uh, uh, the Eidolons, the Kajangan Eidolons. That's the one, yes. And uh, Stark starts off with what turns out to be a Sheyang funeral prayer. Rakuga, Ratuga, Rakina. Idiot! And, and then a Delvian puberty, puberty right? ritual, yes. On the one hand, how does Chiana know that? On the other hand, of course Chiana knows that. Yes. And then Rigel comes in, hacking up the ring. Oh, yes. He, he goes like, <laughs> and I kept it nice and moist for you. <laughs> <laughs> And Stark gives a truly beautiful short speech. Okay, okay, you two love each other. Yes! Enough to be married forever. Yes! Then you are. Congratulations. Do you? Yes, do you? Yes. Okay, you're married. <laughs> Muzzle <Muzzletov. laughs> That was Spaceballs, I believe, yes. Very good. <laughs> and amid a firefight, we witness the birth of... Aaron Crichton and Lil, Lil D, yeah. uh, Aaron Sun and John Crichton's baby. Yeah, th- yes. We actually like dip beneath the surface. We see his uh, his hands to help pull. He sees the head. We only see the side of Aaron's leg, who's still wearing her trousers, uh, which has been slit. Uh, yes, there was like the, the, earlier on. He handed her a knife, and she went, "Oh, good. I'll cut it out." No, 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 no. It's for <laughs> which the was actually Darko's knife, because they're pulled in close, real brotherly like, and it's like, "Mind if I borrow your knife?" <laughs> Careful, it's sharp. You can see him kind of like reaching towards his belt, and it's like... Yeah, especially when you know what that knife is really useful. <laughs> well, for. yes. This is a Tokar knife. Do you know what ceremony young Luxon males use this for? On themselves? At that certain age? Then I suspect the Dargo will want it back unharmed. Um, and there's this just cloud of fluids... And, and out a comes a baby. Like, I thought it was actually kind of bold to visualize that. Because, mm. you know, a lot of genre shows, they tend to avoid the actual anatomical implications right, of, yes. of birthing, even though it's a perfectly natural process. And and hopefully a little bit easier for her than it is for uh, actual humans. I mean, if they did, they put a lot of upgrades in sebations. I would certainly hope that the birthing process is one of them, because that is, like, quite difficult for humans compared to other oh, yeah. mammals. Yeah. Uh, other mammals, it's usually, do, 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 floop, gone. You know? Well, especially uh, like non-placental mammals. Well, yes, but that's uh, that was the way it was originally meant to right. be for mammals, but and even then for like you know babies you had know, to invent the damn placenta. Cats or like you know antelope, like ungulates, that's usually quite easy. Seems to be from the outside. Well, yeah. yes, but I know what you mean. Speedy, I guess. I mean, it makes sense because you don't want to spend hours lying around being very vulnerable to predators. So, as our heroes are, and Erin, who is. You know, she's shocked by what she's just experienced. She's holding this yes. baby in her arms. And she asks John for a favor. We have a son. <laughs> we have a son! We did it. I love you. I love you too. Once again, these impossible odds, they charge in head first. Everybody's got two guns. Everybody's amazing! Dargo, <laughs> Chiana, Crichton, uh, their incredible shots. There's they... loads of shooting and uh, stuff. Yes, we're blowing through this episode like crazy, by the way, but... I mean, that's what happens with action scenes. I mean, we can sit around and, like, analyze every set decision because these sets are gorgeous. There's there's fire and shadow and smoke everywhere. These really can't be more than, like, two or three actual set areas. Yes. But it feels like a whole city. redress them and uh, move around. Speaking of gorgeous shots, there's Moya breaching the water, which looks (gasps) absolutely fantastic. Breathtaking. Pilot, we're on the move. 
I have to bring Moya's propulsion up to maximum to break free of the seabed. No one I'd rather have in charge. But our heroes can't can't reach her. They're pinned down, having made some progress. You can see them uh, uh, licking the canisters if they. Yeah, are, I noticed uh, that as well. Whenever there's a whenever there's a reload, which is, happens with some frequency in this uh, episode, mm-hmm. yeah, they do a quick. I think Aaron sniffs them and John licks them. I noticed that as well. I think it's dependent on the weapon. Oh, okay. Their pulse pistols, the handheld pulse pistols, seems to be the easiest way is just to, to lick them to taste just how potent the chakan oil yeah. is. But I think it's a different weapon that she smells. Mm. It could be, because we've got the red shooting weapons from the peacekeepers and the blue shooting weapons that they've captured from the chariots. Oh, interesting. Those may not even be based on chakan oil. Mm, they may course, be entirely yeah. different vegetables. Yes. Yeah that they're shooting. Okay, here, here's my headcanon for this right now. So all right, the, right. the chakan oil that the peacekeepers use is more like spicy based, like, you know, a capsaicin based. And yeah, the, yeah. the charids use more a mental based weapon. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. We've yes. Got spi- <laughs> we've, yes. We've got mental oil for the chakan <laughs> weapons and we've got the, the, oh. the spicy oil for the peacekeeper weapons. Headcanon <laughs> accepted. Like, on the one hand, you've got Samba Olek and on the other okay. hand, you've got Spearmint. Yeah. Hardcore Spearmint. And if you lick them both, at the same time, you taste hellfire. Oh, I've done that. <laughs> I was in, uh, it was a Russian bartender who introduced me to, I don't know what it was called, but the tradition is this. You get a, a shot of like hardcore cinnamon schnapps right. and then hardcore menthol schnapps and afterwards. They, and then they slap you over the head, wasn't that it? That's the one. <laughs> they put the full glass to your forehead and it's plus, down, down the cinnamon, really? minus, down the menthol one, smack you on the forehead, contact! <laughs> yeah. Contact, contact, because they're almost overrun, but we have an ace in the hole, because Jothy has come back. Oh, yes. He's managed they to... Managed to they might actually they fought them their way through the Scarans from both sides. Yes, they took an empty Scaran troop transport up into space, where he apparently like, like reboarded the penetrator and came back down for a strafing run to clear the road for our heroes. <laughs> Sounds like you guys could use some help. Son, Jothy, we thought you were gone. <laughs> How far away are you? A lot closer than you think. Okay, everyone down! Down! Get down! You're good to go. Thanks for the help. I'm proud of you, son. Yeah, it's all genetics, father. It's like the Luxon lottery. (laughs) Now you cry? But it's not quite so clear because John gets grabbed by Akna. And mm. At least you die. Yes, and suddenly Scarans are not super powerful, are well armored, and nigh impossible to shoot because Aaron does it in one single shot. That may be because she's a brain Scaran. Yeah. Right? She's got more. D- Who knows? Yeah. You know, the shorter head, maybe her skin's not as thick. Yeah, she gets a very surprised final look and then keels over. After Aaron says, It's a boy. In case you were wondering. Yeah. <laughs> and Akna is not the only person who gets shot. No. Because, oh. unfortunately, Darko gets speared through by one of the other Scarans. Yeah, he uh, shot first, speared yeah, twice. He gets like run, he gets, he gets run full through, Boromir. manages to chop the spear off, so he stands there just with the spear sticking out of him, what's left of it. But I'm fine. Fine. And yes, the blood runs dark, so we know that he's in trouble. Oh, yes, very well observed. And Chiana's the last to find out. Yeah. Aaron's there first, and she, like a fellow soldier, just, yep. can you make it? And he goes, no. Yeah. no, 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 no. Come on. Someone's has to hear, may as well be me. Stark offers to uh, guide him to the other side. <laughs> Dargo's answer, I love it. Frill Stark, this is the other side. I was hoping to go back. <laughs> and pain is good. Reminds me that I'm alive. Mm. Like, just get me some rifles. Yep, I want all the guns that there are there. Sir. Then John says his goodbyes. You're the closest friend I have. You could have done better. Now we're in the universe. <sighs> and like Dargo's kind of like, oh, Chana's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'll fine. take like, care I'll of take her. Take care of her. <laughs> no, John, go away. Yeah, let me talk I to want John. to talk to Chiana. I, I, I love that they share a good hearty <laughs> laugh over this. <laughs> I miss you. 
Because this is so, so typical for their uh, what their relationship has uh, <laughs> yes. evolved into. It started out so antagonistic, with especially with Dargo, about John in season one. Yeah. And yeah, they've become true friends. And this is like, yeah. This feels like when uh, when John had been turned into, uh, was about to be turned into a statue and then Dargo yeah, goes, like, well, the good news is Chiana and I are having fantastic <laughs> sex. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, poor Dargo. And Chiana, she Has doesn't want them laughing. No. Like, no laughing. She wants well, him to... Yes. I mean, Dargo gives her the quarter blade. And this is huge for Chiana because earlier on, we missed that bit. Like, she had a conversation with him about, hey, do you know how I change my mind and mm. how... Yeah, I do. I say one thing and then I mean to do it. I mean to say it and I fully intend to do it. And then I change my mind anyway. And she wanted to go to Hyneria with him. Mm. Yes. And now she can't. But they take Chiana to safety. It gets dragged off kicking and screaming by John, but yeah, same difference. They give him all the weapons he can handle, and as they're walking away, John gives Darko some final advice. If they're scared, you see. You tell him who his daddy is. <laughs> tell him, Darko! You tell him who his daddy is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm choking up. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, did, yeah, you, he did, did you did you choke up? Did you tear bit, up a little, little bit? bit? A little bit. Oh, yes. <laughs> even your mandroid heart was yes. melted. <laughs> yes, that was a bit of a difficult moment there. And he lights them up, as yep. Jothi later on asks asks Chiana. I'm very sorry. I'm, I'm really overcome with no. a little bit of emotion here, like whether he suffered. And she said, "Are you kidding? They're yeah, the ones who suffered." suffered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody jumps into the parachute. Yep, just as the sun rises, because. Moya knows how to make a dramatic entrance. Yeah. She was probably fine down there. She's just, no, it's not dramatic enough. It'll be dark and nobody really gets to we enjoy have to the wait shot. Up. We have to because wait Because interestingly that. enough, that's uh, the Moya diving into the water apparently was a decision that Moya made because yeah. then John goes to ask Pilot, like, what the, what, what the frell are you doing? And John and Pilot's going like, yeah, it's not me, it's Moya. Yeah. Surprising him as much as everybody else with that. She's normally... Unless he's still doing the thing right, where yes, you know he's Moya. pretending that yeah. Moya made the decision, but oh, I don't know. While he's sort of pushing the accelerate button. <laughs> yes, exactly that face. <laughs> Listeners at home, you don't need to see this face to know which face we were pulling. And everybody's back on board Moya, and Moya is back in orbit and under attack once again. I'm doing all I can to keep us from being destroyed as it is. <laughs> and as John walks into command, there's this new contraption there and he goes like hey where did that come from yeah and pilot's uh, like oh dear these built it to your specifications and but i thought you didn't yeah well i had to think about it and no what changed your mind and then pilot says not what who as both scorpius and Aaron walk up behind john mm. and we don't know which one he's talking about yeah Oof. which one do you think oh i mean neither of them had the opportunity to talk to him really Oh no, they might have, they would have had some time. Yeah, they would have had some time. It's a difficult one, isn't it? I th I mean, to be honest, I think it was just like John convinced him, but he didn't. That's not, not, not how not they in, not initially, but no. I mean, the pilot had a little bit of a good think about it later, and hmm. decided that some of John's arguments held merit. Interesting. We just don't know. No, we don't. Oh, that would be great to speculate about Scorpius if there were a future. Oh, yes. Yeah. Having a little happy moment in his pants. <laughs> yep. Chiana. Oh, wow. Chiana. Like, she asks, is that the weapon? Come here. Kill the flying slingshots. And kill their mothers, too. Kill them all. Yeah. She's and their like, mothers, too. She goes full vengeance. Yep. Uh. And you can't blame her. Nope. But this is also exactly like in the uh, uh, an eye for an eye leaves the whole kingdom blind. Mm. But it's actually Aaron that John goes to confer with about what to do. Yeah. And little D involved, of course, although he doesn't have much to contribute. But it's not until he gets Aaron's blessing, I think, that he uh, decides to go ahead with it. Yes, because she, she understands him. Like his position has softened. He's learned from her. She's learned from him. And... I think she understands that at this moment there are things, there is something that he has to do. That he, when he says he doesn't have a choice, that's actually correct at this point. We've passed the fucking around stage and now we're in the finding out stage. <laughs> <laughs> and she tells him to 
do what you have to do. Yeah. Right? That's that thing. Not having a choice. You have to do something. Do what you have to do. So he gets into the machine, and despite oh. the fact that he's already going to do it, he still makes Scorpy beg for it. Come closer. And yeah. this this shot of Scorpius <laughs> with this battle going on behind him. You want to see it? The thing you've been chasing my ass all over the universe for? Torturing me? My wife? My friends for? Thornhall weapon. You want to see it? Yes. Beg. I beg you. It's not good enough. Say please. Please. Pretty please. Pretty please. With a cherry on the chest. top. Happy birthday. Now get out of my sight. You say please. <laughs> With a cherry on top. Pretty, Pretty please. please. With a, oh. And Scorpius is just like. <laughs> Actually, he's not all that frustrated about it. Nope. He's just like. He knows what's coming. Yeah. I'll play this game. Yep. Because there is nothing I wouldn't do. You already know that. I would tear apart your family. I would blow up the planet. I will beg on my knees. I will do a little sort of monkey dance. Whatever. Yes. I'll do it all. And he'll, yeah. And he, he exploits that a little bit. Now get out of my face. And he activates this weapon. This blue glow right. comes down over his head. There's these tanks. It involves well, starburst. Yeah, there's a starburst energy which is being used. And then there's this little... Doomp. We get this blue yeah. little comet which... Does a little poof into a blue little ring. Is this some kind of joke? Cosmic. Like a pebble falling into a pond. Right, and everybody's standing there like, is that it? None more so than Scorpius. <laughs> yes. I devoted my entire <laughs> life to this. And that's it. But the blue suddenly turns reddish, orange, and it turns out it's not so much a wormhole weapon as a black hole weapon. Yeah. Which, well, the last time we used, uh, we saw a wormhole weapon being used... It was a displacement engine to transport. Yeah, it was uh, used as a portal, uh, portal technique. So Bas basically, get yeah, put one end in the sun, put the other on where you want to blow things away, and then you just blast pure sun mass at them. So maybe this is connecting into a singularity, which is not something you can actually do because a singularity doesn't have any dimensions. No. So. How does that work? Maybe it's mm. all the wormholes. Maybe it's the, the, yeah. the wormholes in the center of the galaxy. It's Who unclear. Knows? But, but yes. as he points out, like this will just continue to grow until the entire galaxy is swallowed up and all that's left over is this big black monument to our stupidity. Yeah. Whoa. Pilot, are my comms open? It's time for a birth announcement. Comms are open, Commander. Attention, ladies and gentlemen and all ships at sea. If you look out your front window, you will see, by special request... Your very own wormhole weapon. Uh, Crichton, what's happening? The end of all this crap. And yeah, this is basically, he puts the atomic bomb on the table. Oh, poor Mwoma, who has to watch her planet getting ripped apart. I really felt for her. Yeah. My world. I mean, yeah. there weren't a lot of them left anymore, but yes. They've been evacuated from that planet, but yeah, it's a planet evacuated, being swallowed or up. killed by the Scarrens, I presume. No, the survivors have been evacuated. Right, yes, yes. Right? We missed John's fantastic speech. Oh, which when, one? Yes. Yeah. People, when he's just furious about, like, peace, peace. Everybody asked me for, mm. give me wormhole weapons, we want peace. Weapons don't make peace. Wormhole weapons don't even make war. They make total destruction. Annihilation. Armageddon. People make peace, yeah. yeah. Because that's the ultimatum that he's that he's setting these people to. Nobody can escape, which takes them a while to notice while they're shooting at each they other. They both give the same orders. It's like, start backing away, but keep shooting. Yeah. <laughs> An ordered retreat while continuing to fire. Well, yep. there is no escaping. Their, their support forces are swallowed up. Until all that's left is Moya, the command carrier, the decimator, and this expanding, galaxy-consuming wormhole. Yes, as John explains it, it's growing exponentially. And first, Grazer and Stalik try to uh, try to bully him, try to big dog. Yeah. You will not go through with this. I already have! I agree. You are weak. You will not sacrifice the woman and your offspring. 
Yeah, and he's like, well, no, 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 we that's exactly what we're doing here. Like, either you guys promise peace or everybody dies. Yep. And Moya will be first. And Aaron, a new mother holding her baby, declares that... Our son will be raised in peace. Or not at all. These these shots are well, amazing. The, the, or not at all is silent, but yes, that's what yes. it is. Yes. Yeah, it's... <laughs> There, there's this fiery glow. Like these images are seared into my mind. Everyone looks amazing. Even uh, Scorpius is standing there, getting a little bit. He must be getting intimidated. A tan. Well, that too, yes. Yeah. But yeah, he's like looking like, oh crikey, yeah, like this is what I have always wanted to use against the Scarens, presumably, if that even is still true. But it's been his obsession, and now he's seeing it, and he's like, Ooh, not so much liking it anymore. And this is the moment where we realize that what John has been saying is true. He understands something that nobody else does. Mm. None of them have the imagination to truly understand what, uh, what these weapons are capable of. They don't make peace, as he says. They don't even make war. They just make destruction. Yep. Uh, until there's nothing left. I mean, we're recording this like shortly after we watched Oppenheimer. Yes. So there's a bit of that coming. <laughs> now we back. haven't yet seen Barbie, so we're still missing some cultural context. Right, yes. But uh, no, it's a very good point. That was in the film, and I think historically that's accurate. Oppenheimer had held out the hope that seeing the awe-inspiring atrocity of a nuclear weapon would encourage people to never use it. Yeah. Which, well. It hasn't occurred, but yeah, yeah, it's not as if we're living in a nuclear-free world. True. Crichton, can you stop it? I don't know, Pep. Maybe it eats the whole galaxy. Monumental black hole. Giant, swirling headstone marking the spot where we used to live and play and slaughter the innocent. This is insane, Crichton. God! Four years on, and you're finally getting that. And they both back down. First, uh, I mean, Grazer is fairly quick to comply. Holding her belly. Yeah. Her own pregnancy that maybe she initiated just to ingratiate herself with the uh, with the Chancellor as a political move, but... Do we know who the father is? It's sort of implied that it's the Chancellor. Okay. You know, they are romantically entwined, so that right. maybe that's it. Yeah, it no. sort of felt like a political move, but yeah, yeah. She is a woman, life inside her, and she's the first to exceed. Yes, the Emperor takes a little bit longer to agree to uh, peace. He, he thinks that they're bluffing for longer. He's wanting to play chicken for a little bit more. I wonder if his motivation is to save himself. I think so, yes. It feels like it, yeah. right? With Greza, I can sort of understand that she comes from a position kind of of principle. Uh. Sick as it is, even as Scorpius does, but she says, like, for the sake of our children. Oh, what is it again that Stark says? He starts to, like, give another blessing or something? Oh, yes. Let the spirit of peace descend on them. <laughs> and then Chana goes, goes, like, <laughs> and reaching out, like, save a little bit for me. <laughs> yes, because she realizes just a second ago, like, this is what she wanted as well. Yeah. She's feeling that regret. Yeah, she tangles her fingers with Starks. But and then, John climbs yes, back into the machine. Gets a little brief moment with Einstein. Who reaches into his brain and, and yoinks pulls everything the, out. Yeah, yoinks all the information back out again. Which means they wanted this to happen. Because he could have done this last time he was in the wormhole, or any of the other times in the wormhole before. Why couldn't... I've... Fortunately, I have had some time to think about this. Yeah. There are various schools of thought. There are those who believe that the ancients like engineered this from the start. I'm on I'm in the other camp. I think that what we're seeing here is the culmination of John going to ask him. Yeah. John asked for the ability to create wormhole weapons. Yeah. And then this would be the price. Yeah. That they initially gave him that knowledge as a as a means to like get home, as a gift. Yeah. But no more than that. Okay. Well, right, because he couldn't actually access the, the weaponization part without help from an ancient. I think it's like m maybe a bit more of a test because they clearly wanted him to have the wormhole technology because like uh, uh, Einstein literally taught him how to use it and, and yep. cautioned him how to use it. And then he came back and asked for the wormhole weapon technology. And I guess this might have been a bit of a test for him. It's like, 
Yep. And the deal is like either you use it oh, I like and that. you get destroyed by it and in case we don't have a problem with it or you use it and then you want to like turn it back off and at that point, yeah, we're not going to let you keep that. Like the price for that is like the price for using it once is that you lose all uh, all wormhole technology. Maybe this is even a discussion that they had. Yeah. I mean, we didn't no, get to see it, no, but know, yeah, but like that was like, a bargain I, 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 that they I can struck. Feel, yeah, I can feel that that, that oh, was I the, like that, that. That something, something like that was the case. Okay, how do you feel about writing a whole bunch of fan fiction? Because you come up with some dope <laughs> shit, dude. <laughs> but yes, we uh, have a little moment where uh, John falls out of the machine and Aaron seems to think that uh, he has kicked the bucket, which is, it's shot like that. It's shot like he's dead. Yeah. And I was like, I kind of was like, felt a little moment of panic, a little bit of moment of panic like that, like with the... Yeah. Uh, uh, like with the wormhole cra crash, that wasn't the crash thing until I realized, no, wait, they, they didn't show that shot of John lying in the bed in this show at all. It was yeah. like very prominent in the beginning of 501, but they didn't use that at all. It's like where we see John lying in the bed with the light standing on him and yep. John voiceovering himself. Uh, Aaron, in was fact. It Aaron? Yeah, it was oh, Aaron. okay. I must um, remember. We get to hear that in a bit. First, we see that Moya is the site of the signing of a peace treaty yes. between the Scaran Imperium and the Peacekeeper Territory. Overseen by the... By uh, Moma? Yeah. I hope I'm saying that right. She's glowing blue. She's oh, yeah, got she's, a doing, her, she's doing her mind trail thing. Uh, uh, and they both have these giant stamps that they use to sign I'm the so, document. I'm so glad that like, two entirely different cultures use the same kind of device to, see, to make seals or signatures on documents, even though they like, have been at war with each other for like forever. This is what you have the diplomatic corps for, to sort of work out these, uh, like, okay, what are the seating arrangements? It has to, yeah, like, yeah. does that culturally work for everyone? Does that not suggest primacy? Okay, which devices are we going to, we're going to sign? Well, we generally sign with the entrails of our enemies. Yeah. No, we're not doing that. What else have we got? Stamps? <laughs> we'll both do stamps. Fair. Stark comes to uh, an unresponsive John. Goodbye, yes. Because he's leaving, and he is like, thanks, John, for showing him his own inner peace. Yeah, which is kind of weird because he sort of, John sort of ripped his mask off and without his consent forced him into a, a, something that he yeah. really didn't want. But we see him take his mask off now and where there used to be glowing energy that it's sort of sealed over. It looks like a scar. Yeah, like it looks a bit like a burn victim. Yeah, but he leaves behind his mask. Yep. Yeah. We say goodbye to another character, which is Harvey. Oh, yes. It suddenly goes like, I think I've gotten written down as a comment is 2001 and John Odyssey. Uh, <laughs> because this, is, this felt very 2001, this. Like, we've got this oh, really? big black monolith. And, big yeah. black monolith, yeah. yeah. And All like white stark, bedroom. Starkly with a bedroom, yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, someone's been, like, borrowing. Oh, well, uh, if only there was a French word for exactly that. Well, homage. It's oh, an I, homage. I thought you were going to say plagiarism. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no. When you when you do it with this much love, right, it's homage. Yes, okay. And oh, which I guess it makes sense from John's viewpoint of like lots of movie references and other things. So, I uh, guess this was this was Harvey's choice because he he says I was I thinking know. about Slim Pickens on the bomb. Right. But this seemed more appropriate. Slim Pickens on the bomb. Yeah, at the end of Doctor Strange Love. Oh, right. Slim yes, Pickens is the actor who name. plays right, the. Yeah. Yep. Funny name for an actor, isn't it? I'd say, yes. I mean, if it's told me that it was the name of the character, then I would have thought that more uh, probable than, like, the name of the uh, actor. It was an old Hollywood tradition. A lot of people uh, uh, picked weird names to be memorable. Uh, uh, oh, and in Britain as well. Like, and I guess, uh, yeah, because, like, you have to have, like, a unique name, isn't it, if you want to be part of the Hollywood actor's guide? I don't think the guilds existed then yet. But you do now, which right. is why Michael Keaton is called Michael Keaton and not Michael Douglas, right. as he was born, because was there was already, already a Michael yeah, Douglas. Exactly. But this is the death of Harvey. Now that Einstein has removed all wormhole weapon knowledge, my purpose is fulfilled. Because he was like, well, you don't have the wormhole knowledge anymore, so there's nothing keeping me here in your head. Nope. And his sort of erasure program has already started. His reason for existence has been eliminated, and so the software is deleting itself. His black mask has gone grey. And so goes Harvey, while John steps back into the void. Goodbye, John. Thanks for your memories. 
And, and finally, it's Aaron. Yeah. You did it, John. There's no more dying. You know, it's strange. It almost took me losing this little one to fully understand motherhood. And I love it. And all of a sudden, three is not such a scary number. accept it as a trade-off for losing you. With the same monologue that we heard at the start, except with new meaning. I thought that was really nice. Like mm. she talks about three is no longer such a scary number. And we thought about like, oh, that's probably like you, me and the baby. Like that was scary. But earlier on, John had talked about, you know, three children. That's a nice. That's a nice number. They say three is the magic number. Which is not a thing, hey, f tips for, for anyone, to say to someone who is in the middle of childbirth. <laughs> How about we do this twice more? What? Why, Why would yes. you say that right this now? This is not the time to bring that up. But yes, yeah, she like tucks a little D in with John and stands back for a moment and then John wakes up out and, of his coma. And he kisses his, his son. Yeah, kind of like snuggles up around him. Then I scare you. Because you scared me. <laughs> Cryings don't cry. Often. Or for very long. I said, Mother. Oh. oh, yes, gorgeous have scene. You, have you ever smelled a new baby? Only from a distance, and that was not the good kind of smell. Oh, <laughs> new bit. Like, if you ever have the opportunity and the consent of all parties involved, yes. smell a baby's head. It, mm. it really is remarkable. Like you, I was, you kind of cup them and then you go... <laughs> like a dementor? Hey, no, no. No? Is that not no, how you do it? That's oh. not how you do it. Okay. <laughs> I had the privilege of spending time with my uh, my various nibblings, some of them in, uh. in infancy, and there there is really something truly remarkable and like evolutionarily ancestral about just uh, this new baby smell. It's it's really remarkable. Right. So yeah, I guess you, it's to stop you from like leaving them about when there's like too much crying and like it must be some sort of biological imperative which is kind of like baked into yeah because again if we couldn't stand babies crying then yeah. there wouldn't be a human word for sibling yeah <laughs> but it's time yep. for baby little d for his baptism essentially yes i guess so i mean presentation I'd like i mean baptism sounds very so very christian uh, lots of religious. cultures have a concept right. of like the washing the presentation right, well, the that, let's closing go with, in the in yeah the let's sun. go with presentation towards the universe because that's literally what happens they've got the sun deck the uh, terrace is back the terrace is back uh, after we uh, saw it like once or twice in season one yeah and like they put a little bed out there and yeah, they, they, they prepared this and they rehearsed yeah, yeah. it. Like, got the whole, okay, let's do this. Okay, we're going to do it together. And they present Little D to the universe, or they, actually they present the Little D universe to Little D because it's like, wait, look at this. This is all yours. Except that one. That one's yours. Uh, that's, yeah. The bright star, that one's your mom's. Was, I, there was a little bit of Lion King in here as well, I think. Oh, it was huge. Yeah. I had to stop myself from yelling, Nancy, <laughs> Baba. Especially when John, like, Takes him and then holds him up high over Like Rafiki? His... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. They, but yes. They, they wanted him to have a, a name that means courage and, and strength. And honor. Yeah. So we have chosen Dargo. Son Crichton. Little D, we don't know what life has in store for you, but 
Whatever it is, you'll figure something out. But you will never walk alone. And God willing, you'll never know war. Instead, come here. Your mother was right. Your mother is always right. Get used to that. You ready? This is your playground. Orchestral tones, and that's the end of Farscape. What a way to go. It's good, right? It is. And on that note... She gives me a woody. <laughs> she gives you a <laughs> story so Farscape. Right, yeah. No, we've got to do willies and willies. Willies and woodies first, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I mean, willies and hearts to... Hard to find it's, one. Yeah, I'm not even going to... Uh, there's a little... Uh, I don't have it in me. Willies, uh, is there anything that annoyed me about this episode? I mean, we already talked about the makeup being different, so yeah, that can't be that it. that was like not even as prominent in this. No, uh, right? We're used I mean, to it we now. didn't get to see Naruto Natori, Granny. Naruto. Didn't say Naruto. Tira, that's the one I was looking for. Naranti. Naranti, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. No, we got there in the end. Is that woman? Oh, no, Willie's. Was there a Willie? I don't have one. No, no. Uh, and I Woody's I, I, are just too many to... Oh, to, I've got like half a dozen like written down to for choose. those. I mean, there's like the cool guns were fantastic. Uh, I, I, okay. Action sequences. Uh, okay. I might save that one for the actual one, but there's. we'll leave it to that. Let's see what else have we got. Uh, oh, the wrestling move that one of the Scarns pulled on the Lux, and that was like a proper oh, lift and knee. Yeah. Knee, break back on that the knees. That was like Bane and Batman. Yeah, Holy that was crap. like... Uh, the scene with Bracker with all the guns of like when he's just standing there, that was just like, oh, one more comment that uh, Jothy made is like, see you weightless, which I thought was kind of cool. Oh, yeah. It's like, really cool. It's like, take me out to the black, you know, <laughs> tell my mind. I mean, well, that's different. Again, different series. Again, a different property. You've got different properties on the mind. Uh, Moya breaching the water. That was pretty, pretty cool, too. Gorgeous. Well, I mean, okay, I'm going to make it a whimsical Woody. It's like, it's probably a little, a uh, little. Uh, you and your whimsical Woodies. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably like a little like okay we'll have to deal with that because but there's one shot somewhere between like who's the spy and the baby getting born uh, in the middle of the gunfight where you can see Grunchlick sitting there massively yawning it's like he's kind of uh, <laughs> oh wow <laughs> and I think yes. it's just like okay it's like okay so he's yawning but the rest of this take is great I will just use it anyway yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's so on brand yeah. okay what's your what's your real one though. Oh no, that was it. Like I was. Oh, sorry, well, <laughs> I didn't actually say for the real. I was. I was going with your thing. There's too many to list, so I just rattled them off. Yeah. Um, okay. If I have to put on a real one, oh, oh, that's really hard. Uh, for me, it's uh, it's Dargo's final scene. Oh yes, I can I can agree with that. Yeah. Like that was beautifully constructed. A, yeah. a deserved send off to a much beloved character. Yes. And it, they couldn't really like not kill someone in the final episode. They could have. Yeah, but, it would, have allowed but it. it would have been Farscape. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of need that. Yep. Yeah, in a, there like, are consequences. Yeah, so like, kind of like a huge epic fight like this. And yeah, if everybody survives, then it's like, oh, we're back to having a new episode. And like this is like, I mean, it's not like Farscape hasn't killed off major characters before. True. But yeah, it's... Uh, kind of required by good storytelling so i will happily agree with that woody isn't it amazing yes well then there's uh just one thing for us to do and that's a bit of accountancy you have spent over the course of, okay drum roll <laughs> you have spent a total of 6900 points <laughs> yes which is nice and you have earned 
11,725. Okay, so, so I'm not quite doubled them. 75 divided by 6,900. No, not divided by 6,900. No, Isn't this a great way to end like our oh, fantastic yeah, this podcast sounds like with fantastic, some, like, some math? And good thing you're editing this. 4,825 points. I, and here was me thinking like, oh, yeah, I know what I'll do. I'll finish this off by doing what I've, I've said I do all along and like do all the points. It's not, it's not like an enormous amount of fun. So congratulations no. for those 4,825 oh, points. Shame we never found anything for me to do with them. Special. <laughs> for, well, you do have like an actual John Crichton outfit like this is hanging on your shelf. No, you have I agree. 12 issues of the Farscape magazine. You have the uh, Farscape role-playing game. I do, right, yes. Um, and I could share with you the coffee table book of the Creatures of Farscape. I would love to have a little browse through that at some point. So now I can just like look through it at my own pace and not have like you hovering with, no, 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 no further. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Holding my fingers yes, over the pages like, that you're not allowed to. Not follow. there. Yes. Oh, wow. This is... It's been three years. Yeah, just and about, hasn't thereby it? we've come to... You know, yeah, it was about three years ago that we started doing this, and it's been a, great, it's been a good project. It's been a long project. Yeah, it's, and, it's uh, been wonderful to meet so many of the, of the fans, women, queer, trans, NB, like this massively diverse, so many people who have discovered Farscape in the years since it aired and who, who flocked to its weirdness of the story of... Uh, an American jock's descent into the Australian BDSM scene. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for joining us on this journey. And oh, wait, hold on. And that's the story so, so far, far Skate. Yes. Hey, remember we were going to do the whole thing? Yes. And then, actually, why don't you do the thanks this time? See how you like oh, it. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I don't have my a little list of things, but yes, thank you to that's everybody. Never stopped me. <laughs> thank you for everybody who's been uh, with us on this journey. Who was. Uh, be a big Farscape fan, and who, or maybe who just enjoys listening to us natter and inanely in the background while they're uh, long haul trucking or trying to get their way through <laughs> their uh, midnight shifts or anything. Because we've heard from several people uh, oh, yeah. over the years, uh, like uh, telling how they found the podcast and how they enjoyed it. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Yeah, thank you to the uh, the aeronautic engineers in Alaska and the long haul truckers and everyone who's contributed the, the many gifts that we've received without which we would not have had so many entertaining tales from the yes, uncharted territory everybody who submitted synopses for uh, oh my for god the shows. yes because uh, yes. yes we don't have to like plug our patreon anymore we don't have to ask you to like send comments um but thank you to everyone who contributed thank you, yes to thank you this. so much for any contribute contribution that's a good one <laughs> thank you <laughs> contribution that you made thank you lee for the wonderful uh soundtrack that you made for us yes uh, lee writes songs yep lee collier of give them l you can find her on the, on spotify she's amazing and speaking of lee how about we close with the theme tune that she created for us yes i'm this cocky i'm k so, so far, far skate so, so good, good. I can't help dancing. No. <laughs> oh, damn it. I should have wanted you to yes, start talking. I know. This is where I normally like, start. Oh, hello and welcome <laughs> to Hello Farscape. and farewell to So Farscape. Oh, a fun-filled Farscape finale by a fervent fan. And a no, wrong, and a no longer first No, timer. that's right. <laughs> I will not be able to say that anymore about any star, uh, Farscape. All right, Kay. Now tell them who their daddy is. I'm your daddy. <laughs> what a way to end the show. <laughs> <laughs>